Injustice, Gods Among Us and Injustice 2 were both great games that were well received by most critics and fans. And they also made a shed load of money worldwide. So there is no doubt that we're going to be getting a third Injustice video game at some point. Now, one of the best things about the Injustice games and the Injustice comics is that they are separate from the main DC universe, and as such they can do literally anything with their stories and characters, which they have done by killing off a lot of characters in some very Game of Thrones like moments. But superheroes die and come back to life all the time, so having one of these dead characters return is not out of the question. And this video is going to discuss the 5 characters that I think most deserve to come back from the grave, and 5 ways in which they could return. The Joker There were two Jokers in the first Injustice game. One was the Joker that Superman killed, and the other was from an alternate universe. But at the end of the Injustice Gods Among Us video game, that Joker went back home to his home dimension. So when Injustice 2 came around, there was no real reason for the Joker to be in the story. But it's the Joker, and he's the most popular of supervillains in the DC world, so of course he's going to be in the Injustice 2 video game. And so the game creators had to come up with a way for him to be in that game. So they had Harley Quinn have an hallucination of him and fight him as a metaphor for her getting over her own inner demons of insecurity, which were only really there because of the Joker in the first place, so it was actually rather poetic. But for Injustice 3, is the Joker going to be in the game? Of course he is. As I said, he's the most popular supervillain there is in the DC Universe, and the fans will demand that he be in the game. But how is he going to be in the story mode, if he's in the story mode at all? Well, they could have another hallucination scene, but more than likely another flashback scene would work better, but it would be a bit of a cop-out and seem a bit tacked on. It's not to say it couldn't work, I mean if they pick the right flashback the fans might still like it, especially if it's a killing joke reference on the Joker's origin, or something equally as important from Batman and the Joker's past. But personally, I want to see the Joker in the story properly, not just as an hallucination or a flashback scene. And the only way I can see that working is if a Joker from another dimension comes on the scene again. Not the same one as in the first game, no I'd like to see the good Joker. There is a Joker from the comics who is a hero in another universe, in which Bruce Wayne is the villain Owlman. At least in the original story, this has actually been retconned around a bit with modern comics. But that doesn't really matter because as I said the game is separate from the main DC universe, so they could easily have a good Joker arrive from another dimension. I also want this because everyone knows the dynamic of mistrust between Batman and the Joker. The Joker is his arch nemesis after all. And so far all we've had in the games is Superman vs Batman, and seeing the two hash it out yet again in the third game would be kinda rubbish. Not saying he can't return, but it can't just be Batman vs Superman again. Injustice 2 did have our antagonists to be fair, but we all know that it was really just about them two at the end of the day. And a Joker who is trying to save his universe and needs the help of our Batman, who would never trust him, could be an interesting game to play and a compelling story to watch unfold. It would also allow for Owlman to be in the third game, and who doesn't want to see an evil Batman in the game? This isn't saying that Superman can't be in the game, after all that universe has an evil Superman 2 named Ultraman, so it is very possible. And though there are other ways to include the Joker, this is the best way that I can see, as it will really do justice to the character and produce an engaging story. But of course it's up to the game developers to see if they take it this way. Captain Marvel Captain Marvel, or Shazam as he is now called, died in the first Injustice video game. And I think Billy Batson could easily be resurrected. After all he has the powers of gods, and gods don't die easily but they do come back to life easily. Just look at the Norse and Greek mythology of their gods. So if the wizard resurrected Billy Batson, we, as the audience, could probably buy it. But personally, I'd prefer for the powers to be bestowed on a new champion who becomes the new Captain Marvel, or Shazam. After all, the powers the wizard gave him are not exclusively Billy Batson's. He is just one of the wizard's champions, and the wizard can easily select another champion to bestow Captain Marvel's powers to and it would give the Injustice games their own unique version of Captain Marvel to do with as they wish. And it could be really interesting to see them create a new character from an old one, and it could also lead to some very interesting character designs. 
and it also shows Captain Marvel's legacy continuing after his death, which is the goal of all heroes, and is also very good to watch from an audience's viewpoint, because we see characters developing. And the only question would be who they would choose to receive the powers, though his brother and or sister are the most likely of candidates, of course. Captain Marvel! And given that Captain Marvel is getting his own live action film very soon, him returning seems quite likely in the next game, depending on how well the film does of course. Lex Luthor Lex Luthor is one of the biggest supervillains there is. In fact, next to the Joker, I'd say he's the most popular DC supervillain. And there's no surprise, he's a very interesting character. And although the Injustice Luthor wasn't actually a villain, he was actually a good guy, he is still a main character in the Injustice games. And I was genuinely surprised that he wasn't in Injustice 2, but he really needs to be in Injustice 3. And for Lex Luthor, there are two main options that he could come into the third game that would make sense. One is a new Lex Luthor from another universe, who could be good or evil. But since we've already had a good one, an evil one might make sense to mix things up a bit. And the other way he could return is to have a flashback of the good Lex Luthor, such as a part in the story that uses old research or a message he sent in the event of his death that needs to be played at a certain date, and then we flash back to him. Or even just the hero reminiscing about him when he was alive. For this character, a flashback is actually quite usable because he wasn't in the Injustice 2 game at all and they're entitled to have at least one flashback of a dead character. But it has to be this way if it's the same good Lex Luthor from Injustice 1 because if they cloned him or resurrected him, it would just be a cheap way of doing it, and it ruins the sacrifice that he has made in the first game. <laughs> Although a time travel event where Lex Luthor comes from the past and then has to return, knowing that he is going to die and be unable to change his fate, that could work but it'd still be a bit of a stretch. But I think he really needs to be in Injustice 3, as I felt him missing from the Injustice 2 game was a real oversight on the game maker's part. The Fallen Lantern Corps members. This is one and any and all of the Lantern Corps members who have died, and if you've read the Injustice comics, you'll know that that is a lot of them, including Jon Stewart, Kyle Raynor, Guy Gardner, Mogo, and Sinestro, just to name a few. And since they are all members of the Lantern Corps and they're dead, there is only one way for them to return, and that is of course Blackest Night. The comic event that saw the Black Lantern Corps rise as black rings attached onto the dead and brought them back to life as superpowered zombies, and it was every bit as awesome as that sentence sounded. And this is the only way for these characters to return that will truly make sense, and take advantage of the fact that they're all dead in the first place. This could be the main plot of Injustice 3's campaign, and it would be a fantastic campaign to play, especially since other members of the Justice League who are still alive could easily wield lantern rings themselves. It would be a great story to watch and allow for some truly amazing matchups and fights. And of course we get to see what lantern cores all these superheroes actually belong in, according to the game makers. And if this isn't chosen as the main campaign story, then at least some DLC would make sense. I've actually wondered for a while now why Injustice doesn't have story-based DLC. Just a short 20 or so minute movie that is broken up with different fights. Like the main campaign is, only shorter. I mean seriously, who among us wouldn't download a piece of story-based DLC for Injustice 2? Or any of the future Injustice games? We all would. And the best bit is that the hard part is already done. The fighters and game engine are already made. All we need is some cutscenes made and it's good to go and it makes it so much more fun to play through when there's actually some character driven story. And I must admit, when I first heard about the alternate universe fights on the Injustice 2 game, I actually thought they were going to be doing some cutscenes to go with them so we'd get some great alternative universe stories. But sadly, they haven't so far. They've done a few bits of like writing and explanations, but there's no great cutscenes where we can watch it all unfold, and that's what I'm after. And it would be great if they did it in future games, as this would make the game so much more immersive and engaging. And Blackest Night has also never been done in games, TV shows and movies, at least at this point. If you're watching this far enough in the future, it may have already been done, but currently it hasn't. And I'd love to see it get launched as a video game, because it's the perfect environment for a great video game. It's a great story, and it just would be a lot of fun to play. Dick Grayson 
Dick Grayson featured briefly at the beginning of Injustice Gods Among Us, before being replaced as Nightwing by Damian Wayne. And Dick Grayson wasn't in the cutscene campaign for Injustice 2 at all. Though to be fair, in that universe he is dead, having died off screen unfortunately in the game's past. Although in the comics we did see how his death came about. A link to my video about his death is in the description if you want the full story. But Dick Grayson wasn't actually gone for good. After all, death rarely stops a superhero. So in the Injustice comics later on, he returned as the next dead man, a ghost who can possess people, though he can't be seen or heard unless using magic, such as in the film Justice League Dark. Marquito and Loom, he saw this. We online? And somehow this ghost manages to die, which somehow is possible even though he's already dead, and Dick Grayson took over his role as dead man. So if Dick Grayson was to be an Injustice 3, or a future Injustice video game, he would have to be as dead man. Yes, the game could easily break away from the comics, as they have done in so many ways so far, or it could be an alternate version of him or a flashback, but that wouldn't be nearly as good as having him come back as the superhero ghost. And since Dead Man is a ghost who can't be seen or heard by others, there are really are only two ways that he could be a fighter on an Injustice game. Either a magic spell that gives him some sort of physical form to fight with, which would be pretty cool, or he possesses other fighters to fight with their bodies. Now this could be an ordinary human, maybe one who wants to be a hero but lacks the skill, and he and Nightwing join forces, using Nightwing's skill when he possesses the man, and using the man's body that he possesses, to become a superhero duo in one body. But I'd be more interested in seeing him possessing the other playable characters, with maybe their moves changing to match Nightwing's characters, i.e. they have bat gadgets and ninja-like attacks, or he just uses their superpowers to fight with them like they normally do. They could actually have it that he can only possess them for 20 seconds or so, and he keeps continually switching between characters as he possesses one after another. This could be planned beforehand, but I think it'd be more fun if it was random. So every 20 seconds or 30 seconds or however long, one of the fighters just switches off screen and he comes back as a new playable character. It could actually be quite an interesting idea. And when these supervillains or superheroes are possessed, maybe they could have their uniform changed so they are wearing a version of the Nightwing suit. Kind of like a Nightwing mod for any character. But with each character having a unique Nightwing costume that also matches the character's original costume design. Which could be quite interesting, as I'd love to see Nightwing versions of everyone's outfits. Especially supervillains like the Joker, Bane or any of a host of others. Now really I'd like both options. So the player can choose to fight as Nightwing Dead Man or as Nightwing modded characters. But either one would be fine to be honest. And we really need more of the Bat family in the games. They're not just popular characters, but since Batman is the main protagonist, they really should be featuring more in the games. If you actually go to the comics, the whole Bat family is featuring with Batman continually, but they never make an appearance in the games, which doesn't really make sense. And those are the five characters that I think most need to return in the Injustice video games. Though obviously this is a discussion video and it's just my own opinion, and you may differ in your opinion. So feel free to let us know in the comments what you think of these suggestions, and which characters you think should return, and how you think they should return. And just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.